Okay, welcome to another Q&A Thursday. I wanted to um, show you guys, I've been doing this lately as I go through my high six calls. This is a special group, this super, super over the top committed. And when we do the weekly call, sometimes we'll get into this, you know, micro conversation that I say, okay, now that's not private and that's something we can share with the Wicked Smart community. Because sometimes there's some very vulnerable moments in, in our calls. And I, I wouldn't share that with anyone. This call you're gonna hear is just, a little bit about how to talk to sellers and how to get better about that. And of course, you don't have the, the luxury of knowing what took place before and after this conversation, but I think you'll find some nuggets in this. And that's the only time I share it when I think that you're gonna grab some nuggets so you can get better and talk to sellers and get more deals. Because if you get more deals, I don't care if you get one a year from a nugget on the three different playlists, Q&A Thursday, Motivational Monday, Deal Structure Sunday, one deal with three paydays, in our community, generally speaking, those range 40-ish grand to 250 grand. That's a big deal. Enjoy this quote. Let's give these guys context. Uh, we did some live role playing even, so if it comes to that with this, it'll be great. But I think I think Maura started it out, and then a couple other people chimed in that they were just too caught up in how much the down payment or how much money they need down, all these other things versus do you have do you actually have to sell them? So if you want to give more context to that, Brian. Yeah, and Morris, he did bring it up because he had the call with uh, Peter Totten because he's chairman. So they had the, and and Peter told him he said, "Hey, don't let it go. Don't let it go. Like just because they say they want twenty percent down, it doesn't mean that like dig deeper. You don't have to let it go. Stay with them. You, you can usually if you, if you continue to dig at their problem, then you can uncover to see if there's something you can help them with. And I, you know what the the response that I had given was it, when, once we hear that like hey I need twenty percent down or I need a hundred thousand dollars whatever it is we feel like we have to react to that again this is such a great uh, you know intention versus uh, important versus urgent you don't have to respond to that you don't have to give them an answer and the the uh, the uh, example I had given I actually put it on the scripts channel someone I was talking to a seller yesterday who said he wanted twenty percent down. And I asked the guy and I said, hey, do you need to move? Do you need to leave your house? Or so you didn't address the 20 at all? Didn't even, didn't even acknowledge it. And then later in the call, I told him, hey, look, I'm probably not your buyer. I can't do that. Because then, then he told me what he needed to do. He says, if, and I said, well, what are you going to do if you don't get that? He says, well, we'll probably just stay in the house. I said, well, how many are you guy that I'm not going to force you to leave? And I said that to him. You know, I said, because he's looking for me to solve the money problem. Like, we don't have to solve the money problem. I just saw the real estate. The real estate is in the way of their, them trying to get over here. But if they're not going to go there, then this is just a moot point. So you really have to have an understanding of what they're trying to do. And then the dollars and cents are, is always secondary. Always. If, if, if it becomes like the primary focus of the seller, in my opinion, and Chris, you might you know, want to chime in here that they're just not motivated. They're only motivated by dollars and that's a retail seller. Uh, no, I agree hundred percent. That's why I think the, the, why are you selling by when and what if it doesn't and you nail them there is critical. Uh, yeah. And it's not out of the question that I think Paul Delore brought up a call. He had with a guy that has two, two house, someone law and he wants all the money because he thinks it's a development opportunity. I said, just call him in six months, see if it's around like in, in all the things Brian told him with this stuff. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a let sit because one thing I didn't say in the last call, Brian, these people that like the guy that you talked to in time, especially in real estate over time, things change. Like people get sick, people get divorced, um, job change, you know, so, so the whole thing could get turned upside down and it's a different call next time you call. That's why I check back with people totally tell me not to. Yep. Yep. Totally. That's all. That's all I would add. Yeah, I, I have a hard time, um, you know, responding that directly, kind of like, I mean, what you're saying, Brian, sounds really good, but I have a hard time responding that directly because I feel like I come across as kind of an asshole, you know, whenever I respond that way. Um, and so maybe it just comes with practice and, um, you know, not not really trying to push as hard, but just really kind of more of an honest conversation. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it comes more, so that's 100% correct. Like this is something you gotta, you also have to get out of your own head, all right? So you're, again, you're projecting on how you come across. I've listened to your calls, I don't think that. Uh, Hoop and Garner does the same thing. He projects onto the conversation. Well, the seller's not gonna like this. The seller's, you don't know. You, you don't know what the seller's thinking, right? So you just have to kind of disarm the seller and remove that 
if you if you're if you're leading with that, like you're thinking the seller's not going to like this or they're or they're not going to appreciate this. I mean, you're, you're, you're already definitely even start. You just yeah. got to get that out of your head and 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 just try to uncover what it is that they're trying to do. And I, I think in the in the call I had said, you got to forget what you know. Forget that you know about lease purchase. Forget, forget that you know about our buyer process. Just forget all that stuff. Pretend you're a cash buyer. Just figure out what they're trying to do. Because what happens is in these phone calls, and I made the same mistake, all right? I couldn't wait for them to stop talking so that I could tell them how, about a lease purchase. I couldn't wait for them to ask me about what we do at the house so I could tell them about the buyers. That doesn't help them. That doesn't help them. You have to understand what they're doing, what they need to do. What are you trying to accomplish? What's your goal here? Where do you need to go? That's why we say why, where, when, do. That's all you need to focus on. The number, the math is just secondary. Um, Bracey, question, agree 100 million percent as always. A um, couple of questions. So uh, confidence and that, you know, just the reps getting, getting more times at bat. Do you, have you role played live with people yet in the community? Anyone? No, no, admittedly, that's something I would like to do more. I need to do that. Yeah, because when we do, I remember doing it ad nauseum when I started back, this is way back, um, but we we would just do two minutes of affirmations, like a couple each, and then just dive right into ring ring. Like there was no kibitz in and social and this and that. It was it was a hardcore, like like a practice. Like if you read any sports books, every sing, I won't even single anyone out. All the athletes say the, the game is like kind of a, not a joke, but it's easy. Because they practice yeah. extremely hard. So when you role play and you go, hey, Brian, ask me like five questions. And no cell is going to ask you five questions or objections, whatever you want. I call them questions. No cell is going to do that. They'll ask you one or two. And you know what the 10 are that you might get asked. So if you say, Brian, hit me with like five of them this week in one call. And you practice the crap out of those. And then he doesn't like it. And he goes, let's do it again. And you just keep scripting that you can't wait for them to say something stupid on the phone themselves you just like get, come on i i'm ready and that's when they don't because your confidence is different <laughs>